And hello, everyone. My name is Umiyango Yogalingam. I am the project lead for one of Parachute's youth focused initiatives called For Young Drivers by Young Drivers. Uh, welcome to the Vision Zero, the Next Generation webinar. We're going to start off with a land acknowledgement. So, we respectfully acknowledge that the land that we are on is a traditional territory of many Indigenous nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples and continues to be the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of many diverse Canadian First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land, and we hope to continue to reflect on what reconciliation with Indigenous peoples looks like and the action that is required to advance reconciliation within our communities. So before we get started with the webinar, just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, the webinar will be recorded. Um, and sent out to you all within a week. So if you missed anything, please don't worry, you will be receiving the recording over email. We will be doing a question and answer session um, for about 10 minutes at the end of the webinar uh, after our youth panel. So if you have any questions for our speakers or our panelists, you can drop them at any time in the Q&A section of the meeting. And we will aim to have our speakers and panelists answer as many as time allows by the end of the webinar. And lastly, we have a post webinar survey. So once you exit out of the meeting, you will be taken to the survey page. Please take a few minutes to fill that out. It will be incredibly helpful in improving our future webinars, um, as well as developing webinars that would be uh, interesting to all of you. So we're going to get started. Uh, thank you all so much for attending the Vision Zero, the Next Generation webinar during National Teen Driver Safety Week. For those of you who are not familiar, National Teen Driver Safety Week, or NCDSW, is an awareness week designed to build public awareness of teen driver safety issues and encourage communities and youth to be part of the solution. Our messages and resources allow stakeholders and partners to prioritize teen driver safety issues in their communities, engage people in the conversation about teen driver safety, and create change around this big issue. This year, we are encouraging youth to participate in NTDSW's positive ticketing contest. So this is a community-based activity that promotes, encourages, and rewards positive driving habits among teen drivers. And this is just a great opportunity um, to share important teen driver safety messages around distracted, impaired, and aggressive driving. And if you would like more information, you can visit parachute.ca slash NTDSW. So today, we are here to take a deeper dive into youth engagement and partnership in road safety, both in Canada and globally. And I also just want to take a moment to thank our lead sponsor, Desjardins, and our supporting sponsors at CN and Saskatchewan General Insurance for their ongoing support of our road safety programming. So we're gonna start off with Priyanka Patel, one of, our, one of Parachute's uh, Knowledge Translation and Programs Coordinator, who will provide an overview of Vision Zero and the Next Generation. Um, a little bit about Priyanka. So Priyanka joined Parachute in 2022 and supports our elementary road safety program, Vision Zero, NTDSW, and other road safety programs. She holds a Master of Arts degree and an Honors Bachelor of Health Science degree, both from Western University. Priyanka is passionate about advocating for and creating spaces designed to prevent negative outcomes and promote positive health behaviors. So over to you, Priyanka. Thank you, Umi. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Priyanka Patel and I'm the coordinator of program and knowledge translation at Parachute. And I'm here to provide a brief little overview about Vision Zero and the Next Generation, just to provide some uh, context to our webinar today. So Vision Zero is a multinational traffic safety initiative founded in Sweden in the late 1990s. Ultimately, the main goal of Vision Zero is to achieve zero fatalities and serious injuries on the roads. Vision Zero is a goal, but it's also about shifting the paradigm about how we think about our roads. Built on a systems-based approach, Vision Zero holds everyone accountable for their role in traffic safety. This includes road, safe, road users, policymakers, law enforcement, and system designers. Vision Zero recognizes that humans make mistakes and that we need to make sure that our systems are in place so that when crashes do occur, we prevent them from being fatal or severe. As Vision Zero advocates, we are committed to raising public awareness and, commit and commitment to improving our roads, as well as collaborating and engaging with our community 
which includes schools, families, seniors, and youth. Compared to other generations, young people are in favor of Vision Zero. Based on a survey done by Desjardins in 2022, 61% of survey respondents between the ages of 16 and 34 support the adoption of Vision Zero strategies in their region. And 60 or 56% support increasing government funding for Vision Zero. In September 2022, 2020, the UN General Assembly proclaimed that the Decade for Action for Road Safety 2021-2030, with the ambitious target of preventing at least 50% of road traffic deaths and injuries by 2030. In 2021, the Global Plan for Decade of Action was released to support the implementation of the Decade of Action and its objectives. The Global Plan describes what is needed to achieve the targets and calls on governments and partners to implement an integrated safe systems approach. It aims to inspire national and local governments as well as stakeholders who can influence road safety, including young leaders. Road safety is a shared responsibility and young people play an important role in shaping the future transportation system. They're the age group that's most affected by road traumas with road traffic crashes being the leading cause of death among those aged five to 29 years. They are the generation that will inherit the outcomes of decisions made today and about the safety of the evolving transportation system. As such, they should be asked about their needs and to help shape the system and generate ideas on how to better protect some of the most vulnerable among us. Meaningful engagement with young leaders can help foster greater ownership of the road safety issues, as well as develop a new cohort of road safety advocates with a fresh perspective on future mobility. The following recommendations draw from proven and effective interventions and best practice practices for preventing trauma and providing a comprehensive overview of actions to implement and strengthen system safe systems in collaboration with youth. Multimodal transportation and land use planning is an important starting point for implementing safe systems. Multimodal transportation considers diverse transportation options, including walking, cycling, public transportation, and automobiles, and accounts for land, land use factors that affect accessibility, such as bike lanes and open streets. The next generation is in favor of alternative forms of transportation. Based on the survey done by Desjardins in 2022, 84% of young respondents are using or considering more alternative forms of transportation over other age groups. Safe road infrastructure is essential to reducing road traumas. Road infrastructures must be planned, designed, built, and operate to enable multimodal transportation, including shared public transportation, walking, and cycling. Younger respondents are particularly fond of bike, protected bike lanes, increased sidewalks, and roundabouts. Lastly, vehicles should be designed to ensure the safety of those inside and those outside them. The, to improve vehicle safety, different features can be integrated into vehicle design, either to avoid crashes or to reduce the injury risk for occupants or other road users when a crash does occur. Based on the survey done by Desjardins, young respondents report that they commonly rely on these safety technology features to help them avoid collisions. The next generation has spoken. Thank you to Desjardins for conducting this annual survey on road safety. This annual survey has provided us with valuable data on young people's perspective on Vision Zero. Thank you. And I'd like to pass it on to Umi to introduce our next presenter. Thank you, Priyanka. That was a really great overview of um, Desjardins uh, survey. I want to turn it over to our next speaker. We're really lucky to have her here with us today. Uh, uh, our next speaker is Sana Kasane. Sana is a young road safety advocate from Jordan. She works as a project manager at Youth for Road Safety or Yours. She has been selected as the first ambassador for the European Year for Youth 2022 to recognize her voluntary work and initiatives in areas related to sustainability, ecotourism, and road safety. She has also been awarded 
the best film prize for the youth category at the Global Road Safety Film Festival 2022. She believes in meaningful youth empowerment and engagement as an important pillar to achieving the goal of the second decade of action for road safety. Sana will be talking about the Youth for Road Safety program and the work they are doing to engage and partner with youth. Uh, over to you, Sana. Thank you so much, uh, Ami. It's my pleasure and honor to be um, uh, speaking to you today about one of our most ambitious programs uh, at yours, Youth for Road Safety, which is the Global Youth Coalition for Road Safety. Uh, basically, at the coalition, we focus on main uh, three elements um, of activity, uh, basically advocacy, youth empowerment, and working with decision makers. Um, it's a standalone network of passionate young people who are working to uh, create uh, a safer future for mobility and road safety. And uh, as yours, we act as a support structure, you know, to support uh, young people on individual levels. So how did uh, the Global Youth Coalition start? It all started uh, with the Second World Youth Assembly that happened in Sweden in 2020. Um, it was an official event under the third ministerial conference on road safety. Uh, during that event, over then 160 uh, young leaders gathered from 74 different countries um, to attend the assembly and to add their inputs to shape the global youth statement on uh, road safety. The delegates after the event, they wanted to have a, a space where they can uh, connect with like-minded young people to make roads safer and um, that's how you, yours responded to this demand by creating the Global Youth Coalition for its safety. Today, uh, we have more than 1,180 members from 107 countries who are claiming their space, uh, working with decision makers, building their capacities to, to make the future safer for themselves and also for their peers. Because as we all know, uh, young people are the most affected age group by road crashes. It's the number one killer of young people. But if we look at the work of youth organizations, we find that it's not mainstreamed. It's not the, the first priority. So we would like to see more young people involved in this, in this field. Um, at the Global Youth Coalition, we are guided by a number of principles um, that support us to work closely with our members towards achieving the demands that are listed in the global youth statement. Um, I'm going to share with you the main uh, principles. Um, so we are a youth driven network because we believe that you can't do anything for youth if you do not work with youth. So we believe in the young people uh, leadership and we want to put them at the center of development to ensure that all the actions are led by young leaders and uh, to make sure that they have a seat at the table. We give them the chance to succeed and learn and to generate leadership through experience. Uh, one of our core principles is also equality and diversity. We pay special attention to diversity in terms of country, region, gender, expertise, and also field of study. Uh, because we believe that promoting diversity and inclusion is key to uphold equality of opportunity and acknowledge that a diverse team yields vibrant and innovative solutions. So everyone is welcome at the Global Youth Coalition. We are also guided by the Global Youth Statement that was shaped at the third uh, um, uh, World Youth Assembly in, in Sweden, uh, which acts as a key roadmap a tool to open conversation about safe mobility and its implementation. It also calls on stakeholders and uh, guides strategic actions in countries and communicates that um, the youth coalition will act as a support system to young people across the world. We promote meaningful youth participation. We believe that young people shall never be used as decoration as decision, at decision making spaces. They should not be uh, tokenized and they should be provided with uh, adequate opportunities to work closely with decision makers because they have the potential to accelerate and energize a road safety revolution. And they are the real uh, agents of change in their immediate communities and beyond. We also believe that uh, when we talk about road safety, we're also talking about sustainable mobility uh, and all our efforts will be focused toward creating a system that is accessible and affordable for everyone, regardless of their gender or socioeconomic status or even their age. And it is essential to talk about Vision Zero because we do not tolerate uh, losing any loss of life 
no one shall die because uh, of a road crash because they simply want to 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 move in in their cities um one of our most important programs at the global youth coalition uh, is local actions it's basically uh, our way of supporting uh, young leaders to work at grassroots levels uh, we support them and orient them to address the most pressing issues in their cities or their local communities where they where they belong um, uh, basically we open a call to applications every year where we uh, receive ideas from young people um, where that should have uh, a clear connection to the a global plan for the second decade of action for road safety and uh, it should uh, include suggesting working on evidence-based um, activities to address the most pressing pressing issues in in the in the local countries of, of these young people um, um, all these projects are uh, implemented 100 percent by young people and they should uh, focus on one or two um, priority areas of uh, um, either advocacy uh, community mobilization or even peer engagement. And starting next year, we will also welcome an, a new category where we be supporting young people to work uh, on infrastructure change. Through local actions, we provide seed funding and mentorship for the projects for, or for a period of over one year where they can work closely uh, with their peers and also with decision makers. So this is how we are working to generate a global impact, but as at grassroots levels, because we work closely with young leaders in their own communities. In the last two years, uh, we have implemented 32 local action projects uh, in, in 22 countries, led by um, one of the most amazing young leaders uh, from all over the world. If you go to claimingourspace.org slash local actions, you will have the chance to read more about the projects. We also have led three global campaigns um, uh, focusing on road safety and using arts as a main uh, uh, technique to um, reach to more young people and to uh, bring their attention to the number one killer of their peers. We have also produced sex advocacy tools that work uh, on connecting road safety with, with the broader sustainable development agenda. And uh, today we have more than um, three youth at decision making structures at the WHO Council, we have the president of the IFMSA and um, the um, and the first ever envoy on youth at the COP27 um, is also a member of the Global Youth Coalition, which is which is Dr. Omnia Lamrani. So if any of you is an advocate for climate uh, and will be attending COI17 or COP27 next month in Egypt, uh, we can connect you with Omnia and um, you can discuss how road safety is uh, directly connected uh, with climate change and other environment, environmental challenges. Uh, we have also launched the Yours Academy, which is an open access platform to learn more about um, road safety and sustainable mobility. Um, it has been launched in last May, and today we have more than 200 active learners. And you are invited to join this platform. It's uh, free, uh, free of charge. Uh, as long as you have your laptop, you can uh, uh, access the self-paced uh, learning modules. Uh, so far, we have a module on uh, int introducing road safety and the global plan, and the second module focusing on uh, uh, the safe system approach and uh, Vision Zero. Um, uh, thank you so much for listening. Um, I would be happy to answer any questions if you have. And um, also, you can reach out to us. I'm going to drop the email of the coalition in the chat um, if you would like to jo join our network and you need some support to um, finish your application. Thank you so much, Sana. That was incredibly interesting. And the work that yours is doing is so innovative. I highly recommend everyone go check out their resources and tools and you know learn more about the coalition and the work that the youth there are doing. Um, thank you, Sana. Uh, we're gonna move on to our youth panel. So next we have three members from our Canadian Youth Road Safety Council, an active, passionate youth advisory council of 20 diverse youth aged 15 to 24 years old across Canada um, who want to make roads safer for youth. So the CYRSC, the Youth Council, came to be after we recognized the importance of youth partnership in road safety. Um, and that led us to create the Four Young Drivers by Young Drivers initiative. So this initiative aims to effectively address the issue of road fatalities among youth by partnering with Canadian youth aged 15 to 24 
In order to understand the facilitators, barriers, and attitudes that affect safe driving behavior in young drivers, uh, look for new opportunities and channels for increasing youth awareness of road safety issues and build a framework um, and tools that will guide the engagement of young drivers in our road safety programming. And like I mentioned, this project is co-led by the Canadian Youth Road Safety Council. We meet monthly with the council to understand important issues and trends that affect youth, help us identify gaps, barriers, potential solutions in current road safety programs, um, advise us on youth recruitment and retention strategies, and so much more. So we are so lucky to have three of our members here um, to provide their insights into road safety, as well as engaging young people for this work. So I'm just going to quickly introduce each of them. Uh, first, we have Ariane Corasani, born and raised in Montreal, Quebec. Ariane, uh, Ariane is studying medicine at Université de Montréal. She is passionate about advocacy, public health, and health promotion. This led her to co-found a youth-led grassroots teen vaping prevention campaign that aims to spread awareness about the harms of e-cigarettes to high schoolers across Quebec. Ariane understands the importance of community engagement and enjoys sharing her experiences in medicine and research to inspire youth to pursue their goals. Ariane is a member of the Canadian Youth Road Safety Council and strives to advance road safety on a national level. So thank you so much for being here, Ariane. Um, I'm going to be moving on to our next youth panelist, uh, which is Emily Shibata from uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. Driven by the prospect of making sustainable change in the transportation industry, Emily is pursuing a Bachelor of Applied Science uh, in Civil Engineering at the University of British Columbia. Her work with McElhaney's uh, Traffic and Road Safety Division has fostered a particular interest in complete streets, a philosophy centered on safe and accessible transportation for all users. Lying at the intersection of her dedication to helping others and her technical knowledge in traffic engineering, Emily is excited to be a member of the Canadian Youth Road Safety Council as an advocate for safe and sustainable transportation. Uh, so great to have you here, Emily. Thanks for being here. And last but not least, we have Max Novak. Um, as a grade 11 student from the city of Winnipeg in Manitoba, Max is aspiring to become a civil engineer who designs safe, enjoyable streets. He is passionate and believes in the movement that cities should be built for people first, then cars, just like cities in the Netherlands. These cities are safe, accessible, and appealing to walk, cycle, or take public transit in. Cities where cars are treated as guests and not are not needed to travel within them. As of present, Max participates in Bike Winnipeg advocacy meetings to learn and support the challenges of addressing his city's lack of proper bicycle infrastructure. Thank you for being here, Max. Great to have you. Um, we want to also thank you all so much for the amazing work that you're doing with us uh, to make road safer for young Canadians. So we're going to get started with our panel. Um, and our first question is fairly broad, and that is, what does Vision Zero look like to you? And maybe, Max, you can start us off, and then we can go on to Ariane and Emily. So I see Vision Zero's principles as a practical and solvent solution, which, is, which would change the influence and background of our road design and drastically improve road safety. Uh, it's overall pretty good. That's what I feel about it. Awesome. Very nice and succinct. Thanks, Max. Um, Ariane, do you want to draw your input? Yes, for sure. Um, I think for me, ultimately, um, it kind of just boils down to putting safety and human life at the forefront of like the policies that that we put forth and the practices that you know we we take upon ourselves every day and just kind of reshaping the way that we think about driving or planning and just like sending the clear message that like loss of any loss of life is just unacceptable when it comes to something that's so preventable like being on the road and you know actually implementing road safety into our everyday lives awesome thanks Ariane. that was great insight now, emily do you want to and us off with this question. Yeah, for sure. Um, to me, Vision Zero is more than just a strategy for road safety, but also part of a larger shift that values people, and that's all people. So while many of our existing road networks today have been designed to serve a pretty narrow range of relatively in privileged individuals, Vision Zero presents a much more holistic design approach that safely accommodates diverse needs. So 
by acknowledging the tremendous power and responsibility of the system rather than focusing on the faults of a single person, I think Vision Zero models a radical yet necessary shift that is much needed across many sectors. Awesome, thank you, Emily, that was a great answer. So our next question, you've kind of all given us a little bit of insight into the answer to the next question, but I'm gonna ask anyway, and that's what makes you care about road safety as a young person? Well, at the Youth and Urbanism, my passion mainly stems from civil design and the greatness achieved by other countries across the world. Many road designs, like in the Netherlands, importantly show that streets are for people, not cars. The fact that in my own city, there isn't a single street that is truly great to walk on and is safe kind of disappoints me. Even though in nice cities, there are nice streets within my city, uh, none of them truly show how to be safe in terms of it being safe for a 10 year old or for someone younger being able to freely walk across the street without worrying about incoming cars or the fact that some streets are just designed like a through fare, even though it's a residential street designed for people living on them. And the fact that for engineers, especially in my city, or I guess most across Canada, they don't see that boundary between a through fare and a place for people to live. It's just saddening to me. And I really want to see something better. And this is where Vision Zero takes place. It addresses that by simply showing ways and changing priorities of the design method to design streets that are safe for almost everyone. Rather relying on just uh, drivers, it's instead relying on infrastructure and designing it in a particular way that enforces the safety of on, among individuals. And yeah, that's why. Okay, thanks, Max. Yeah, I guess it also speaks back to Emily's um, answer to the previous question about, you know, designing roads that's safe for everybody, not just a specific subset of the population. Yeah, awesome. Uh, Ariane, do you want to provide your input? It kind of kind of ties in with what Max was saying in that, like, I think it's easy to care about road safety because ultimately it can affect everyone. And also, especially as a young person, knowing that, like, the statistics kind of are not in our favor when it comes to road safety it makes me, like, care about it even more because obviously like when I'm driving with my peers I don't want to be like when my friends go driving I don't want to be worried that something may happen to them and I think you know I also do consider road safety to be like a public health issue and I think when we think of public health issues we think of like tobacco we think of you know COVID but one thing that affects young people so much is is you know road collisions and traffic injuries and so for me like especially tying to the fact that I'm in the medical field like I you know I see it all the time you see like you know, diseases, illnesses, and people, you know, things that, you know, whether you smoked and then you got like lung cancer, those are things that, you know, that could have been like, not like your own choice, but just the fact is that there are diseases out there that no matter what you do, you would have gotten it, you could have got cancer from anything, but a road collision is something that's like so easily preventable. And like, I myself have been in the ER and I've seen people come in from minor injuries when it came to like, you know, road traffic and stuff like that. And so for me, being exposed to that, it's just like, it's unacceptable. And that's like, it's not something I see that we could be complacent about because if we just, you know, actually did the work, then like these types of things would be prevented. And so knowing that there's something that we can do and that it's not necessarily being done on a wide scale by, you know, the people who have that like agency and that power to, to move things along to me makes me care about it even more because it feels like I can do something if I actually, like, you know, got involved. Great answer, Ariane. Yes. So what I'm hearing is that road safety is an underrated topic, <laughs> especially among youth. Yes. Um, Emily, do you want to tell us what you, what you feel? Yeah, I mean, just to echo what Max and Ariane said, I mean, it affects absolutely everybody and it's nearly impossible to avoid transportation in our modern lives. So I think we can all agree that safer is better. And then on a more personal note, I've also had several friends and family members whose lives have been severely impacted by collisions, which is what, kind of what inspired me to pursue a career in transportation and road safety. Great, thank you all so much for the answer, for your answers. Um, our next question is, you know, what advice would you give to young people who want to get involved in making roads safer for themselves, their peers, their communities, anyone, everyone, everyone, like you said, is affected by road, uh, road safety. You know, what advice would you provide them um, to get more involved? Well, I would say advocate towards better streets and roads 
for people, not cars. This can be done simply by sharing information with your peers, friends, family, convincing people that uh, convincing people that the current mentality that our roads are dangerous because of because simply people driving and just bad drivers is not the way to go, and that the responsibility should not be fully on them, and instead rather that on the way the road is designed, and that's what we should be focusing on. And I guess there's also the fact that uh, I'm not of age yet, but if you're 18 or older, go vote for people who are actually planning and to do stuff about to do stuff about this. And yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Max. Yes, voting, I think, is a pretty understated action that young people can take. Um, it's, like you said, if you're 18 or older. Um, Ariane, do you want to continue off? Yes. Um, I think for what I would tell other young people would be just like, the first thing you can do is getting informed because once you're able to talk like about something intellectually, then you could, you know, shape other people's, um, you know, perceptions of a given issue. If someone doesn't see road safety as a big issue, if you have, you know, the stats, if you have the information, that's like one other person you can, you know, convince to get on board with the mission. And I think the more people know about an issue, the more, you know, they're, you know, inclined to care about it. And so I think, I think one of the things with road safety that we talked about, the reason that it's, you know, it's an underrated issue. And so the more that people I think are aware about it and the more people care about it, then I think the more you'll have, you know, young people rallying around and, you know, change makers in the communities actually, you know, working together to, to bring something out of it. So definitely getting informed and, you know, talking about it with others and, you know, hosting an event at your school, like the more, you know, the more you get involved in a given issue, the more you can, you know, bring um, the conversation to center it. And then that way more people are going to be, you know, inclined to, to get involved. Great. Thank you, Ariana. That's a really great point. Um, yeah, that's something that we're seeing is that, you know, education is key. And sometimes you don't even know what they don't know when it comes to road safety. So trying to get as much information in a youth-friendly way can be a good way to kind of foster that. Um, great. Thank you. Emily, do you have any input on this? Well, um, a classic approach well, maybe a little outdated, but a classic approach to road safety consists of the three E's, which are engineering, enforcement, and education. And generally, if young people, it can feel as though engineering and enforcement and changes on that level, it's a little bit out of our hands. So I think it's really important to focus on education and that it's not just of yourself, but also your peers. So fostering change can be as simple as just adopting an attitude that prioritizes road safety so that can look like kindly suggesting maybe it's not such a good idea when your friend engages in unsafe behaviors. And I think the more you do that on a personal level, it can have a ripple effect and slowly start to change the culture and the dynamics that exist in amongst young people and young friend groups. Hey, thanks, Emily. Yeah, that's a really great point. You know, as much as we don't want to admit it, we are influenced by our peers and that peer to peer connection and conversation can go a long way to kind of just building that culture of you know, safe driving and making unsafe driving not as cool. Uh, awesome. Yeah. So we're going to move on to our next question. And that's what should organizations keep in mind when engaging or partnering with young people? Organizations, decision makers, policy makers, the people who are at the top um, and working with young people. I think um, I would say like it's important to not, you know, it's important for organizations to not like underestimate like young people, Gen Z um and like speak with them and like with a with like kind of like not like a with, with somewhat of a mature tone and understanding that like I think Gen Z is very information driven I mean we see it all the time on social media like a certain social issue that maybe people didn't know a lot about but then you give them the information and they're like posting like infographics on social media and they're you know sometimes the infographics aren't always you know don't paint necessarily a full picture of a situation but they do help spread awareness and I think that um if you give young people the facts and you know and actually treat them as like a mature audience. I think they appreciate that rather than being, you know, given like a dumbed down version of like what's going on. And so I would just tell um, organizations to, you know, take Gen Z seriously because because they're serious. Great, yeah, I guess that's the uh, the key message to this whole thing is that don't underestimate young people at all. Um, thanks, Ariane. Um, Max or Emily, do you want to add your input? Um, sure. I think that organizations should keep in mind that a fresh eye never hurts and young people, they have the freshest eyes of all really. So 
while there is a lot of value in extensive experience, I think that can also lead to conditioned thinking that may risks that risks missing certain perspectives. So by keeping an open mind and engaging and partnering with young people, I think we might discover new and out of the box ideas. Yeah, I agree with Ariane. Uh, it's really important to not dumb down information to youth. Youth are super smart. We all know this. I uh, guess I am too. Uh, 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 but the point is that teaching everyone and show, giving youth full information allows them to come to their own conclusions. And by doing that, people are, can learn new things. And of course, there's always the fresh eye view, which is amazing. And lastly, they're the people who are eventually take place once they grow up of what the current of the current careers of people. And in terms of that, it's really important that people become passionate about it. And the biggest way is just by teaching youth. So if an organization can go up to youth and really show them the world and teach them new things, that's amazing. And hopefully one of them will be our savior. Really great point, Max uh, and Emily. Um, I like the the freshest eyes. Yes, youth do have the freshest eyes and ideas, I think. I mean, I'm biased because I work a lot with youth, but um, just working in the past few years, I'm always so blown away by the ideas and innovation and, you know, just approaches that youth have toward um, just different issues. And like Max said, you know, youth are inheriting the, the next this, this issue, the road safety issue. So um, having them involved as early as possible, I think it's a, it's a good, good step. Um, great. We're going to end off with our last question, and that is in the long term. What do you hope to see when it comes to road safety and driving behavior for your generation? I would say mainly the full on reconstruction of roads that fit so they fit the vision zero model. And that is a big thing to say, but if we can even have some of our streets in our cities doing that, especially the larger ones that have a lot of people, a lot of traffic going through them, that would be amazing. It would greatly increase safety numbers. And if we just did that, I think it would really start to change in terms of people seeing that. And once people see it, it can slowly spread to other places. And that is very important. And of course, the next step from there would be re would be reaching the Dutch sustainable uh, development pattern. Great, thanks, Matt. Ariane or Emily? Um, I think for me, like what I would hope to see, I mean, if, if we compare to like something like, like tobacco, we see that like compared to 20, 30 years ago, like teenagers aren't using tobacco nearly as much. And if anything, it's like when someone pulls out a cigarette, people are like, what are you doing? Like, it's it's not cool anymore. So what I would hope to see is that like when it comes to road safety, it becomes so like ingrained in like, you know, the culture that like seeing someone do something that would be, you know, an unsafe um, form of driving or taking a risk with their, their driving behaviors, it, it would be so second nature for people to just be like, hey, don't do that or that's not cool without it, you know, even being something they have to like reflect upon is just like the immediate response to that type of behavior. So that's what I would hope to see ultimately from um, in, in my generation in the long run. Okay, thanks, Ariane. Yes, the culture shift, it's it's a big undertaking um, and how we're, we're gonna do that. There's no silver bullet for it, but uh, hopefully slowly but surely we can do that. Um, Emily, you wanna add your thoughts? Yeah, I totally agree with Ariane. I really hope for that cultural shift. Um, you guys talked about that places value on all lives. And also not just the current lives, but lives of many generations to come. And that happens with a bit more sustainability in our systems. So can choosing not to drive be considered a driving behavior? Because I hope for dramatic reductions in personal vehicle use that's supported by an increase in active transportation that is safe and accessible. So to achieve this, we really do have to start prioritizing sustainability and equity. Well, yesterday. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Emily. That was a really good point. And yes, yeah, so not driving can be driving behavior change as well. Um, and like you said, it depends on the systems and the sustainability of those systems. And even also educating youth on the alternatives to driving can go a long way. Um, awesome. So we are actually very good for time. I just want to open up the floor to our panelists to add any last thoughts or comments, ideas about you know youth engagement and road safety. Uh, maybe I can go. Oh yes, for sure. Go go for it. 
Thank you, Omi. Actually, at the Global Youth Coalition, as I said, we promote a meaningful youth engagement. So it's very important what all the youth leaders mentioned, that the first thing is that they should be informed, they should know what road safety is and how they can contribute to making roads safer because they are the most affected age group by, by road crashes. Um, so I would encourage them to go check our policymakers toolkit, which helps you um, uh, diagnose how does your government or decision maker work with young people. Uh, so you're going to use like scorecards to evaluate their performance and then see the key recommendations on how can you improve the work, um, maybe starting with the city council or the city municipality, something similar to what Max mentioned. And I think there are many innovative ways where you can contribute to achieving Vision Zero. Starting, for example, since you talked a lot about urbanism, tactical urbanism is something like very fun and um, um, it's, uh, it, it's crucial to work with to promote safer uh, modes of travel um, that are also good for our health and better for the planet. So I would encourage you to go check the policymakers toolkit of the coalition and to keep claiming your space and to push for working with decision makers, because this is the first thing that will be impactful and fruitful um, to, to lead work and road safety. And remember that working on awareness campaigns alone is not effective. It leaves zero impact unless it's uh, accompanied with working closely with decision makers, working on law enforcement or doing uh, uh, modifications to the infrastructure. So always push for more and more uh, empowerment and um, uh, to, to make other sectors collaborate with you and, and support your endeavors. And I'm really proud of all the points that you uh, to brought to our attention. And I highly encourage you to keep uh, leading um, uh, the network that you're working with. And I wish you the best of luck. Thanks so much for that, Sana. Yes, the Policymakers uh, Toolkit is a really cool tool. I encourage everyone to check it out. Um, and it's like applicable to a variety of different contexts and countries, I believe, right? Yes. Um, thanks, Sana. So I'm actually going to open up the Q&A. So if you have any questions, please drop them in the Q&A section. We'll try to get to as many as possible. But I did have one question to start us off with, and that is, um, why do you think more young people are likely to support Vision Zero than the older generation? So I'm just going to open it up to everyone, all our speakers, our panelists. Um, if you want to answer that, you can unmute yourself. Okay. So, uh, Emily, would you like to go first? No, go ahead, Max. Okay, thank you. So uh, I find that it's mainly involving a lot of youth because it is one of the many issues that as us youth will have to grow up to live with so involving climate change road fatalities which are increasing and other issues among this basically just part of cities issues like this almost affect our daily lives and the fact that especially with the invention of the modern internet all of us have so much access we have so much access to so much knowledge that we are almost informing ourselves and with so many problems arising, more and more people are trying to act and talk about it overall. And because of that, more people are interacting and especially youth who it directly it relates to. And because of that, youth want to stand up. They want to actually do something about it. They want to give, they want to get, uh, it's, it's a bit weird of saying it, but they want to give back a lot to the world so they can be happy overall. And that, generally relates to this. So in terms of why people want Vision Zero so much, well, mainly because our cities are kind of lame, to be honest, in terms of the aspect that, well, it, if I can't walk around somewhere, do I have to go to a park? Do I have to go get in my vehicle just so I can drive to go to the park? Why shouldn't I be able to just go out of my front door and just walk around and enjoy life? And the fact that the way we've designed our cities is so dangerous that you can't even do that in some places. Well, I think that affects a lot of people and it, people are really starting to think that maybe this isn't the best idea. Maybe it shouldn't be like this. And that's, uh, it's more of an adult way of thinking, but I do believe like me, uh, some people do believe that this, that people see this and that's why. I don't know. I just mumbled there. Uh, I'm not the greatest at this, but 
I will let it continue. No, that was great, Max. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Emily, I, I, I think you want to also write your thoughts. Well, from my understanding, Vision Zero involves systems thinking, which takes a look at the big picture rather than focusing on smaller individual components. So while older generations, especially those in positions of influence, they were able to keep their scopes relatively narrow, I don't think young people today are offered the same privilege with climate change, social justice, and many other pressing issues knocking on our doors every day. So this results in systems thinking being much less novel, and then therefore initiatives like Vision Zero are an absolute no-brainer. Great, yeah, thanks for that. That's really insightful. Um, Sana or Ariane, do you have any thoughts on the question? I can repeat the question if you want. Honestly, Emily said everything I, perfectly, so no comment, nothing I have, one, I have one more thing to add. There's also yeah, the fact that it. more people are living in cities now. So there's just a, a larger population that can see the issue now. So there's that also like contributing to the thing. That's a, that's a good point, yeah. Uh, Sana, do you wanna add anything? Yeah, actually, um, when you speak to uh, ministers of uh, uh, transport, for example, or when, when you speak to decision makers, they start telling you proudly about the strategies that they have set. And when you check the goal, they say, we want to reduce fatalities by 25% or 50% and in six years or in five years. And they think that this is revolutionary, that they're doing their role. But when, we, when you speak to young people the, they, that don't have the same resources, that don't have the same authority, they will tell you, no, I want to go for Vision Zero. This shows that they're ambitious and they are willing to do what it takes to stop the number one killer of their peers. So I would, I would say that, um, innovation and, um, uh, and um, applying all the measures, the evidence-based measures that uh, um, are proved to be efficient in uh, reducing the number um, of uh, road crashes that are fatal or lead to serious injuries is something that our young people can take at the core of, of their work. And um, um, it's something that they need to push because the majority of uh, uh, communities around the world are youth, are young people. So they are citizens, they have the right to vote, you know, to uh, um, to, to put the, these people at the decision-making spaces. So um, they are encouraged to keep pushing to uh, implement Vision Zero and not to just accept, you know, these uh, ridiculous numbers. And not just when it comes to setting the goal to reduce the fatalities and injuries, but also in terms of investing in young people. For example, a lot of governments say, okay, we want to, to dedicate 1% of our budget to support youth initiatives. But this is ridiculous. You need to create a dynamic mechanism where young people can directly make inputs and insights to the strategy and to the work that they are leading. So um, it's important for young people to set a high standard um, for, for their own engagement and their own involvement in, in road safety. Yeah, that's really great. I like that last line, you know, set, set the high standard for themselves. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Sana. Um, we do have a question in the q and I'm going to read it out loud. So a recent survey indicated that risky driving, so street racing, stunt driving, speeding 15 kilometers per hour over the limit, alcohol and drug impaired driving, increased in Ontario during COVID-19 among the 16 to 24 year old age group. Do you have any thoughts about why this occurred? Any insights? I very much do. So uh, during the COVID pandemic, oh well, ever, there was enforcement route out for people to go stay at, or at least, I, I don't know what you'd call it, but basically people were told to stay in their houses. And because of that, a lot of the freeways, especially in Ontario, since they have massive ones, uh, pretty much were completely empty for the first time in probably tens of years. And because of that, there's already a large amount of people who like doing stunts like that. And now that they had all the infrastructure they wanted to, well, people could just do what they wanted to. There was no clogged freeways that there was there were no clogged freeways that they couldn't use. And now all of a sudden you had them. So the fact my biggest concern is that the fact that people are able to drive dangerously like that inside of cities is mainly the bigger problem. And that directly re relates to Vision Zero, where the aspect of designing your st streets and roads to be safe instead of just relying on people, which is always a good idea, sarcasm right there. Uh, but the point is that 
yeah, it's mainly just that. And I guess uh, I'm just really relating to the fact that it's mainly our infrastructure that was the issue in that problem. I can't really explain uh, the direct impact to the people. So what were people thinking? I think Emily and Ariane can answer that better. And that's the end of my question of what I have to say. Thanks, Max. Yeah, so infrastructure just definitely plays a role um, in that uptick. Uh, Emily or Ariane, I know Ariane, you have to leave, but Emily, uh, do you have any insights? Um, I think Max covered all the bases. I mean, in keeping with the themes of Vision Zero, now for me to go and point fingers and place blame on the individuals would kind of go against go against what we've been talking about. So I think it's because our infrastructure does allow it and they had, there was an opportunity. And when there's an opportunity, people, especially when you're a little more angsty or bored or, you know, people will take the opportunity, so. Yeah, thanks, Emily. Um, Sana, I know this question is specific to Ontario, but do you have any observations in terms of trends that you've seen um, globally? Yes, actually, um, since this study has um, an age group, specific age group between 16 and 24, so uh, biologically, um, the brain, the human brain is not fully developed until like 25 or 27 years old. It's different between males and females. So um, this age group is more likely to break the law, to be less responsible, uh, especially when they are driving with their peers. So um, I think that it's not only about infrastructure, it's about rethinking how we are giving driving licenses to these people, uh, about putting more restrictions on this uh, risky behavior so that they would re rethink uh, about, you know, like speeding or even like drinking and driving. And it's very important to have uh, like um, specialized research centers that dig deeper into that into that study and that speak directly with youth to understand why they are more likely, you know, to be less responsible, uh, to understand the the, uh, the patterns that lead them to, to behave like this on the roads. Yeah, thanks, Anna. That's a really good insight. Yes, I think sometimes we forget the, the brain development aspect of you know road safety. Um, it's actually one I think one of the tougher ones to address too, right? Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. We have one question, one more question in the chat or the Q and A section. Um, do you think that schools might be a good setting to engage and discuss with youth about Vision Zero? Students might be interested in talking to a transportation planner or engineer. Any thoughts on that? I, mean, I think so. Absolutely. I mean, in my school, when I, when I was in high school, we had several presentations that were delivered by MAD, so Mothers Against Drunk Drivers, and that I would, especially amongst my peer group, it did have a significant impact in just the attitudes around intoxicated driving, and it was no longer, it was really just completely unacceptable. So when we had friends who would even suggest that they might get behind the wheel, intoxicated it was like whoa how did it how dare you that's so irresponsible that's so uncool and just seeing that the effect of just those few presentations I think it's a great opportunity to start incorporating road safety and just transportation planning into high schools great yeah thanks Emily yes the mad presentations always have a big impact I remember mine too <laughs> mm -hmm. Max? Yeah, same thing, the Mad presentations. Absolutely amazing, whoever came up with the idea, did a fantastic job, definitely worked on me. Uh, overall, in terms of how that relates to Vision Zero, I feel like, uh, or not how it relates, if Vision Zero happened, uh, I feel like it potentially could work. Some people might not find a huge interest in it and people will disagree with it, but because it's used, people have different, their, your opinions develop vastly over that time. There's also the fact that it could also potentially inspire some people to to pursue pursue a career in that field, which is also amazing, especially because we need a lot of new inspirational engineers at this point. And so, if we did do a presentation like that, I think yeah, it would it would probably be very useful, mainly because it would change the perspective of a lot of, of a lot of people thinking that maybe it's not bad drivers, like. Well, it's not 100% bad drivers. Uh, it's mostly on the infrastructure, which is failing. Like, why do you think the city puts up a sign in the intersection saying high collision zone? They know they designed it badly. They just don't say anything. And yeah, I have to say. Great points, Max. Thank you for that. Um, one last question, and then we're going to wrap up our webinar. And that is, do you think that Vision Zero is an achievable goal? 
Um, so, you know, eliminating all traffic injuries and fatalities um, in your lifetime, why or why not? It's a, it's a tough question. I will go, give it a go. So, scientifically speaking, totally. But uh, in reality, I think the biggest issue would be changing people's perspective. That will, as a lot of youth are getting growing older, a lot of people will agree, and a lot of people today already agree, but really sharing the information to almost everyone and teaching people is probably being the biggest hurdle and convincing people, especially current politicians and mayor, mayors, because it's really the civil side that most of this takes place. So cities and stuff. In terms of can we do it? I think in my lifetime, I think I can see some drastic things happening. Like there's a lot of new bike lanes. There's a lot of new, like biking to work is now not fully considered insane anymore. So there's the fact that there's more infrastructure for biking and it's at least now you're not just stranded on the road. So there's that point of safety. In terms of actual design safety for like vehicles and stuff, up. There are some things that are better. You have seen that recently that in highways they put in new markers and they've tried to divide the two lanes, so therefore it's not as dangerous. But in terms of like true safety, uh, it's to be decided. I'm not 100% sure yet. We could achieve something similar to the Netherlands, but it, it requires time and it requires uh, passion. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Max, for that insight for a very tough question. Um, Sana or Emily, any last thoughts? Um, I think that if um, if you ask me uh, this question, like on a global level, I would say maybe it's challenging. It's almost impossible, you know, because like there are the huge differences between the, the different countries around the world. Young people are, are living different realities when it comes to, to road safety. But if, for example, I, I would talk about my own city, my own community, the school zone in, in my area, then it's absolutely achievable. And I would like this mindset to be more mainstreamed among people to think of what they what is achievable for them as young road safety advocates we can influence impact uh, you know in our areas in our local communities on our peers but maybe we we it's not something that we can control when it's on a national level so it's very important to think of what of the level of uh, um like uh, practicality you know and uh, what can be done within the resources and uh, the connections that we have so it's very important to be aware of uh, working at grassroots levels and definitely if all of us had this had this concept then we will definitely be able to achieve this uh, impact on, on a global level awesome thank you yes local actions <laughs> yes local actions awesome okay emily any last thoughts before we wrap up um, i guess just eliminating all i'd like to say yes but in many ways, our world is kind of imperfect by default. So it is very difficult for me to imagine an absolutely perfect system on a global global scale. But um, with all the cultural advancements and that prioritize health and safety combined with technological advancements, like incoming autonomous vehicles, et cetera, I do think that vision, well, vision at least near zero is possible. Great point. Thanks, Emily. Okay, with that, we are going to wrap up our webinar. A big, huge thank you to our presenters and panelists. This was incredibly um, informative and insightful. Uh, we encourage everyone to join the conversation about National Teen Driver Safety Week on social media using the hashtag DrivingTakes100 and NTDSW2022. For more information, you can visit parachute.ca. Uh, I also wanted to say a big thank you again to our sponsors at Desjardins, CN, and Saskatchewan General Insurance. This is just a final reminder that there is a survey that will pop up once you exit out of this meeting. Please take some time to do that survey. It will be incredibly helpful. And with that, I hope everyone has a great rest of the day and that this webinar was incredibly useful to you and hopefully we'll see you at future webinars. Take care, everyone.